At the annual dance and dinner party held by Kate and Julia Morkin and their young niece, Mary Jane Morkin, the housemaid Lily frantically greets guests. Set at or just before the feast of the Epiphany on January 6, which celebrates the manifestation of Christ's divinity to the Magi, the party draws together a variety of relatives and friends. Kate and Julia particularly await the arrival of their favorite nephew, Gabriel Conroy, and his wife, Greta. When they arrive, Gabriel attempts to chat with Lily as she takes his coat, but she snaps in reply to his question about her love life. Gabriel ends the uncomfortable exchange by giving Lily a generous tip, but the experience makes him anxious. He relaxes when he joins his aunts and Greta. Though Greta's good natured teasing about his dedication to galoshes irritates him. They discuss their decision to stay at a hotel that evening rather than make the long trip home. The arrival of another guest, the always drunk Freddie Malins, disrupts the conversation. Gabriel makes sure that Freddie is fit to join the party while the guests chat over drinks in between taking breaks from the dancing. An older gentleman, Mr. Brown, flirts with some young girls, who dodge his advances. Gabriel steers a drunken Freddy toward the drawing room to get help from Mr. Brown, who attempts to sober Freddy up. The party continues with a piano performance by Mary Jane. More dancing follows, which finds Gabriel paired up with Miss Ivers, a fellow university instructor. A fervent supporter of Irish culture, Miss Ivers embarrasses Gabriel by labeling him a West Briton for writing literary reviews for a conservative newspaper. Gabriel dismisses the accusation, but Miss Ivers pushes the point by inviting Gabriel to visit the Aran Isles, where Irish is spoken, during the summer. When Gabriel declines, explaining that he has arranged a cycling trip on the continent, Miss Ivers corners him about his lack of interest in his own country. Gabriel exclaims that he is sick of Ireland. After the dance, he flees to a corner and engages in a few more conversations, but he cannot forget the interlude with Miss Ivers. Just before dinner, Julia sings a song for the guests. Miss Ivers makes her exit to the surprise of Mary Jane and Greta, and to the relief of Gabriel. Finally, dinner is ready, and Gabriel assumes his place at the head of the table to carve the goose. After much fussing, everyone eats, and finally Gabriel delivers his speech, in which he praises Kate, Julia, and Mary Jane for their hospitality. Framing this quality as an Irish strength, Gabriel laments the present age in which such hospitality is undervalued. Nevertheless, he insists, people must not linger on the past and the dead, but live and rejoice in the present with the living. The table breaks into loud applause for Gabriel's speech, and the entire party toasts their three hostesses. Later, guests begin to leave, and Gabriel recounts a story about his grandfather and his horse, which forever walked in circles even when taken out of the mill where it worked. After finishing the anecdote, Gabriel realizes that Greta stands transfixed by the song that Mr. Bartell Darcy sings in the drawing room. When the music stops and the rest of the party guests assemble before the door to leave, Greta remains detached and thoughtful. Gabriel is enamored with and preoccupied by his wife's mysterious mood and recalls their courtship as they walk from the house and catch a cab into Dublin. At the hotel, Gabriel grows irritated by Greta's behavior. She does not seem to share his romantic inclinations, and in fact, she bursts into tears. Greta confesses that she has been thinking of the song from the party because a former lover had sung it to her in her youth in Galway. Greta recounts the sad story of this boy, Michael Fury, who died after waiting outside of her window in the cold. Greta later falls asleep, but Gabriel remains awake, disturbed by Greta's new information. He curls up on the bed, contemplating his own mortality. 
Seeing the snow at the window, he envisions it blanketing the graveyard where Michael Fury rests, as well as all of Ireland.